Minecraft has a whole system of items, rails, and minecarts designed to create transportation systems for mobs, items, and players, so in this video I'll explain everything about them. So of course for the fundamentals of minecarts and rails, basically how it works is that for every type of minecart they also need to be on top of rails. Of course in certain scenarios minecarts need power to go higher up, and there's different types of minecarts and different types of rails that all serve different purposes. Also basically any mob or player can get inside of minecarts minecarts if they're the right size. And there's a ton of redstone purposes surrounding all these different components. Let's start with rails. What are the main types of rails and how do they work? Well, there are four rail types, powered detector rail and activator rail. Powered rails are crafted with gold, one stick, and redstone dust, and that gives you six. And then standard rails are crafted with six iron ingots and one stick, and that gives you 16 rails. The activator rail is crafted with two sticks, one redstone, torch and six iron ingots. And finally detector rails don't actually use sticks in their recipe, but they do have six iron ingots, one stone pressure plate, and redstone dust for six. Well let's start with the standard rail, what can it do? Basically standard rails can be placed almost anywhere you'd like, but something you may notice is that in certain patterns it'll be cut off like this. That's because you can't turn and go upwards at the same time with standard rails. However another important thing to be aware of is that rails cannot go down one block, then up the same block, it just doesn't work. And they cannot go down two blocks at once. If you place these in a 2x2, two two, it'll make a circular pattern with rails. And the one big difference between normal rails and all other types of rails is that where normal rails can turn, all other rail types don't actually have a turn variety, they only work going straight. But speaking of other rail types, let's go on to the powered rail. Powered rails, as you would think, are used to power a minecart. For instance, right here, we could power this minecart and make it go up the hill like this. The thing is, though, with powered rails, you cannot make them go in circular configurations. And so because of that, if you wanted to, let's say, make a circular track that goes infinitely, you'd have to do something like this, with powered rails all connected to a redstone torch, or even just to a lever, either of those will work to power these on. Maybe even a redstone block if you want. And then of course you get on the minecart and have that minecart go on there forever. But then to stop it, all we have to do is right click on that again. And something you may notice is it actually stopped really abruptly, and I'll show you why. Let's on this track right here, put a singular unpowered rail, and then let's put right next to it a standard rail, as the power and powered rails will connect other powered rails, but cannot go between unpowered rails. So for instance, this line of redstone will keep going this way, but eventually will stop. And actually, if we place powered rails this direction for a long time, eventually they will power off because it's gone far enough away from the torch that there's not enough power for it to continue on. As it goes eight blocks away from the powered block, but anyway, with this one unpowered rail here, if we place it down on this incline and just go down, you'll notice the minecart actually gets stuck on the side of the rail here without going any further. And that's because powered rails, when they're not being powered, is a natural break. This is actually a really cool thing because what you can do is you could, let's say, have a minecart ride like this where you go on it and it's basically completely still. Of course, I'm pressing W here so I actually go forward. But if we get close to this lever here, we can flick that and then we can actually make ourselves be powered all the way up here. Also, instead of just having to punch minecarts randomly to pick them up, the trick to basically pick up a minecart is really simple. Just think of it as a mob you're killing. So basically, if we have like an axe or something and there's more damage there, that is going to break that a lot quicker. And that's exactly the same as it would work if it was a boat. A really important thing to keep in mind is the fact that powered rails can only power minecarts or speed them up to a certain level. They can't actually exponentially power your minecarts to go faster and faster. And so once that minecart gets to a certain speed, it's just going to stay there. And actually, I'll go into a little bit later what the best way is to lay out powered rails to not waste them. Now here's something important, it is the detector rail. Detector rails are almost always used with standard rails and powered rails. Now the opinion tends to be fairly split on whether or not detector rails are worth it, but more or less here is how they work. If a minecart goes on top of a detector rail, it'll power the other rails next to it, or really will power anything else next to it. It's kind of an alternative to laying out powered rails and just having them always on. With a detector rail, only a minecart can turn those on. So for instance, you could have a setup looking something like this. Instead of the rail, you have 
a detector rail on either side. It'd kind of go between a bunch of powered rails and then one detector rail. And if you come to a turn, of course, that would change. But generally, it would be a system like this. Now, the only problem of this tends to be if the minecart gets stopped and you're going on here, it's actually really, really hard to get started again with those powered rails to stay on. The problem is, too, because these can power anything around them, if we place down the minecart right here and light it along the track, we could actually have these other blocks of TNT next to the side go off without us being able to control that or not. And although, of course, that does make us a very cool self-destructing railway, it is not something that is entirely practical. So overall, it's kind of up to you whether or not you use detector rails, but for me personally, I do just like using them, as it is kind of cool to see powered rails only be on when you're traveling over them. The only thing that's important to know about detector rails is they do not work if they're going sideways. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say we have a detector rail right here, and it's kind of in a slope, as of course every rail can be in its flat or sort of sloped position and then we ride a minecart all the way down here well what will happen is as we ride along the track you'll notice this will turn on but it will not send power to the rails next to it it actually will send the power when we're going downwards but when it's going the opposite direction you'll see it just does not send the power up I'm not sure if this is a bug or not but because of this if you're using this design you have to be very careful to make sure that this stays powered on and as well as that to never let the detector rails be at an angle or this entire track will be made one way but fundamentally you can definitely think of this as a minecart pressure plate and now finally for the last used rail and that is the activator rail the activator rail will basically do only a couple things and it does need to be powered on for this to happen so if we ride over that nothing's going to happen but if we power it and then ride over it basically it'll just hop us out of the minecart automatically there as I did not decide to get out there it simply automatically got me out of the minecart so that's the first thing it does is it ejects mobs from minecarts which is definitely a funny use but again I'm not touching anything he just automatically pops me out right there what is interesting though is if a minecart just sits on top of one of these that's powered it'll actually rotate back and forth like that which I think is being used to visually represent it trying to get a player out and because of that you can actually use this in build to sort of look like a crusher or a grinder of some sort. The only other thing it does is it can disable minecarts with hoppers. So if a hopper minecart goes over one of these, it'll just stop picking up items. Now this is disabled and you can see it definitely is, it's not picking up anything. We can re-enable it by making it roll over a unpowered activator rail. And if we throw something next to this now, it'll definitely go into that minecart with hopper. It can also power on a minecart with command block or it can ignite a minecart with TNT that does not instantly explode like a minecart with TNT normally would if it just drops. It'll actually go through a full ignition phase. Now rails are a bit expensive, and of course if you're making a huge minecart track, which I would suggest, it definitely takes up to thousands of rails. Here's a good trick to not have to deal with that if you don't mind using duplicators. Basically start by placing an observer going downwards, then place another observer going up into that to make an eternally running observer clock. You can see that's turning on and off. Place a random block on top of there and a sticky piston going off the side. Then a lever here, turn it off so this stops going back and forth. Now with the slime blocks, make a long L shape. So put two here and then off of that, put these other blocks. Then we're going to go on top of here and place the observer like this so that the redstone dot on the back there is facing the slime. And in here, place whatever types of rails you want to duplicate. You can duplicate any rails you want in Minecraft that works with every type. If we turn this on by just simply flicking the lever right here, this basically instant rail farm is now done. And you can see here every time it goes back and forth, all those rails there pop off, but they also stay on the actual track. And so because of that, we're getting an insane amount of instantly duplicated free rails. Now to be fair, a lot of servers don't allow duplication on them, and a lot of people consider duplicating to be cheating. But it's completely up to you, and it is always a decent method if you don't have an iron farm or a gold farm, and you want to get yourself a ton of rails. Let's move on from rails, though, and go to minecarts. There are seven different types of minecarts in Minecraft. However, only five of them are obtainable in survival. First of all, we have the command block minecart, which works basically how you'd think. If it's over an activator rail, it'll turn on. And of course, having a command inside of it, it can definitely be useful for map makers. Next, we have the spawner minecart. And the spawner minecart also works very similarly to how you'd think. It's basically a mobile monster spawner. And it always starts as being a pig spawner. And then, of course, we have the standard minecart. This is basically used to have one mob inside of it. So unlike, let's say, a boat, it can only hold one mob. And that is a pretty useful minecart, of course. 
and there is the minecart chest. Now minecart chests, if you right click on them, can store things inside of it, like right there. So it's sort of a good way of transporting items. And something really good to know about all these different items is that when you break them, they now break as one item. Whereas it used to be that you'd break this and you'd get the minecart and the chest separately, but now you actually get it as one thing. There's also the furnace minecart. You right click on the furnace minecart with coal, and it's basically its own steam powered train, as long as it's on top of rails that is, and it'll push things around it for a while. Then we have the minecart with hopper. This is a super powerful hopper, and for example here, if we throw items above it all the way up here, it is still close enough for it to pick it up. Unlike a standard hopper where things have to be really, really close, this can be used to grab items in a really wide radius near it, which makes it ideal for basically any type of farm. And of course, finally, we have the minecart with TNT. Now, this is more powerful than your standard TNT, as you saw right there. The one piece can actually blow up quite a bit, but because of the expense of the iron associated with them, it's generally not worthwhile. But either way, that is all seven types of minecarts and what they do. Now, one thing that is important to know is how to actually use the hopper minecarts and the chest minecarts effectively, because of course you can put things in them, but how do you automatically get things out of it? If there is an empty hopper underneath the minecart with hopper, it will take the items inside of it and slowly put them inside that item hopper. And the same is true with the minecart with chest. If we put that above here and put items in it, it'll also have those items slowly drain down. Now, if we have a hopper above one of these minecart chests, this will also happen. These will drain from the hopper into the chest. In fact, believe it or not, if you have a hopper minecart beneath the chest, that'll actually take items directly out of a chest, absolutely no hopper needed. But that is fundamentally how you move items around with hopper minecarts and chest minecarts. Alright, so what is the best pattern for your minecart tracks? Now, there are some very strange patterns you can do where you basically have minecart circles going into each other and that sort of makes it so that your minecart is going from corner to corner to corner. And although this is technically one of the fastest configurations you can do, the problem is it actually takes so much time to set it up, it basically removes any benefit of actually doing it. However, that is technically an option you can do. If we're looking at standard configurations, let's start with some tests. What's quicker? If we have this minecart track going over this very long distance going up and down or on the flat distance. Well, if we took this minecart rail and laid it out flat, it would definitely be a lot longer than this one as it's of course sort of squinched up like that. So if we place a redstone torch right here, which one goes faster? Well, if you take a look, they're basically going at the exact same speed. And the reason for this is because in the Minecraft code, the amount of time it takes for a minecart to go up and down rails is the exact same time it takes, whether it's going across one or going up one like this. And so just be aware of that when planning out travel distance is, it absolutely does not matter whatsoever if the minecart is going up or down, just only how long it actually goes in terms of blocks. But it is very expensive to use only powered rails, so what's the minimum amount of powered rails necessary? Well, if we do a pattern something like this, this minecart will keep going. We can visibly see it slow and speed up again. If we put a minecart here and here, we already know these two run at the same speed, so we're basically testing between these two which one of these ones will go faster. Let's take a look. If we see, those are actually going at the exact same speed, which again is very good news. However, if we have, let's say, a minecart over here and a minecart over here, here, you'll notice this one is going way faster than that one. It was actually started after that one, but it came to the finish line first. So you do want to add some powered rails to kind of get a speed boost first, but after that there's actually no benefit of powered rails unless they're more than every four blocks apart. And so next time you're laying out your minecart track, I definitely recommend that pattern. Having one powered rail, four unpowered, one powered, four powered. This is especially good if you're not using a rail duplicator, because then you're still getting maximum power, but you're also not having to use too many powered rails. Now this works great for straight line minecart tracks, or ones that just go one direction and then slowly go to the other direction, but how do you actually make junctions with your minecart tracks? Well this can of course only be done with standard rails, because they're the only type of minecart track that can turn, but here's a good example of one. We have a junction like this, and we want to have the ability to have our minecart go straight forward or to the side. Well all you have to do, place down a lever next to that and flick it, you'll notice when we flick this, it'll go between those two orientations. 
directions. And so now for writing our minecart track, we can switch this last minute to go that direction, or switch it again to make it go this direction. And of course this works the other way as well, either going this way or if we turn it, going that way. And if you want to do this so it's not just a lever sticking to the side of a minecart, what you can do is have a redstone torch underneath here, so the torch is directly powering this block that has that minecart rail on it, and then have redstone go into the back of that block, and have that redstone go a ways away of course, and then from there you can have that lead into a lever, or whatever power source you want it to be. In fact it could even be something as simple as a detector rail. Then when we turn this, this is also turning its direction, so you can kind of see that. So whatever you decide to do, that is how you make a minecart junction, and of course these can be automated as well. For instance, this could go to a detector rail. How do you transport mobs in minecarts though? Well there's a couple questions to this. The first one I guess would be, how do you even pick up the mobs? A really important fact to know about mobs is that the vast majority of them will not cross rails. That's right, for instance, we could surround this sheep in rails, and if we do surround that sheep all the way, it'll never cross those rails. We could even straight up punch a sheep inside of here, and it'll not try and cross those rails. Now for whatever reason, minecarts will tend to pick up mobs the easiest if they're on a corner rail like this. So for instance, we could push this sheep right into the minecart and then push the minecart onto that corner, and if that sheep was actually still there at the same time, because of course once we pushed it onto that corner it can then cross the rails, we now have that sheep captured inside the minecart. Now of course this is mostly for villagers, so what you want to do is push this towards the edge, push that villager towards the edge, and now that minecart and villager are on the same block. So of course once that villager is in the minecart you'll just push it around and use it as per usual, and so that's basically how you transport mobs in minecarts. Something really cool I did on this specific Minecraft world is make a massive rail transportation network, and I'll try and show you very briefly what you want to do as well. The first thing is to plan it out very extensively. You'll notice all around these maps are these long lines. Those are the minecart tracks, and I've marked them out by having them be on top of wood, or by having path blocks on either side. And so for instance, there's a minecart track that goes across here, then one that goes through here and over here down to here. These are actually incredibly large minecart tracks, so step one is planning it, then you want to build a railway station, and make sure to have at the railway station a bunch of minecarts and different signs that lead you to different areas. So for instance, we go on this track right here, we have the configuration of the powered and the detector rails, and all these sections start with kind of like a subway type track, because they're underground for a while as they go underneath the city, but after that then they eventually go above ground. So for instance right here we were just going underneath a river there, and once we get to the other side we'll eventually peer on the other side of the river. And what's really cool is let's say from this station we can continue on going to other areas. This will say this goes to the central city station, and this one to the north central village station, but more or less that's how you make a series of minecart tracks and stations. It's actually pretty simple, you just want to make sure that that it is a fairly easy system to use. Also there are some really cool automations people can do, so for instance having your minecarts be broken by cactus, or automatically dispensed by dispensers. And it is a very good idea before you decide to make your minecart track, what kind of configuration you want to use. Also, as something now very important to know, minecarts and rails can now totally work, even if they're underwater. So for instance, right here, if we go on this minecart track, you can see we can actually travel all the way across here underwater inside of here. It just is a bit slower underwater, but still kind of a fun option if you want to. You can have all your minecart rides be underwater, you just need to make sure to have yourself some water breathing, or you could definitely drown. But it could still definitely be a fun thing with minecarts to make a small section that dips underwater. Anyway, that is everything about minecarts and Minecraft. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to press the like button, subscribe to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!